In this previous video, which you can check out by clicking the card above or the link in the description, I pointed out that a capital gain is the difference between what you sell a capital asset for and its basis. In that video, I promised a more detailed look at the concept of basis. So here it is. I'm the Tax Geek, back with more of your taxes, oversimplified. Simply stated, the basis of any capital asset is the cost of acquiring it. Since this video primarily concerns the basis of securities, basis is the cost price of the security itself, plus any brokerage commissions or other fees you paid at the time of purchase. But there's more to determining the basis of an investment than that simple statement. Primarily the question of what happens if you sell securities that you acquired at different times at different prices. Before 2011, it was not required for brokerage houses to calculate the basis of most securities and report it to the IRS. Instead, it was often up to taxpayers to calculate basis and report their opinions as to what that basis was to the IRS. Starting in 2011, the IRS started requiring brokerage houses to report their calculation of basis to both the taxpayer and the IRS. This greatly simplified tax reporting for taxpayers, who now had a verifiable basis to report. These securities are known as covered securities. Today, unless you sell securities you purchased before 2011, the vast majority of security sales are of covered securities. If you have older securities, your brokerage house may still calculate the basis and report it to you, but not to the IRS. These are called non-covered securities. These are also relatively simple to report on your return since they require little, if any, additional calculations. But what happens when brokerage houses don't calculate the basis of a non-covered security, leaving it up to you to calculate the basis of the securities you sold? How do you go about the basis calculation? To start with, you need to know the date the securities were purchased and the price of the security on that date. If the securities you're selling were acquired at different times, you need to know this information for each date the securities were acquired. If you know the dates the securities were acquired, you can find out the purchase prices easily online by going to sites such as www.bigcharts.com or www.yahoo.com forward slash financial where historical price data is available for thousands of different securities. When you find this information, make sure you are using the adjusted price, which takes into account any stock splits. As an example, the adjusted price for Target Corporation on May 15th, 1995 takes into account the 12 stock splits that have taken place since that date. Once you have all the purchase date and price information, you can now calculate the basis using the first in, first out, or FIFO rules. This rule states that the oldest securities you purchased are the first ones you sold. This can be explained much better with an example. Adam has been investing in Mega Corporation for many years. Over the years, he has made purchases of Mega Stock on several different dates at several different prices. He purchased 300 shares on March 13, 2003 at $30 a share. He purchased 75 shares on September 20, 2006 at $45 per share. He purchased 50 shares on October 27, 2008 at $15 per share and he purchased 200 shares on January 7, 2010 at $25 per share. He decides to sell 400 of his shares on May 15, 2022 at $50 per share for a total of $20,000. Here is how he calculated his basis. First, he takes the 300 shares purchased in 2003 at $30 per share or $9,000, then the 75 shares purchased in 2006 at $45 per share, or $3,375. And finally, 25 shares out of the 50 shares he purchased in 2008 at $15 per share, or $375. This gives him a total basis of $12,750, and his capital gain is $7,250. What if you don't have all that information? First, don't guess. If your return is audited and you cannot produce an accurate, verifiable basis, the IRS will require you to pay tax on the entire proceeds of the sale. Researching these records could take time, but might result in significant tax savings in the end. 
The current reporting rules in place were designed to make things much easier for investors and result in more accurate tax liabilities. So that's how basis is calculated when an investment is purchased. But there are other ways to obtain capital assets. You can inherit them, or you can receive them as gifts. If you didn't pay for the asset, how do you determine its basis? For inherited property, it's easy. The basis of inherited property is the fair market value of the property as of the date of death of the person who left it to you. For example, Janet inherited 1,700 shares of QXR Corporation from her grandfather, who paid $5 each for them, so his basis was $8,500. When he died, the stock was worth $50 per share for a fair market value of $85,000, which now becomes the new basis. If Janet sells the stock three months after she inherits it for $87,500, her capital gain would only be $2,500. When you receive assets as a gift, it's more complicated. The basis is either the giver's original basis or the fair market value of the investment as of the date of the gift. The figure you use depends on whether the fair market value is greater or less than the giver's original basis. If the fair market value is less than the giver's basis, you use the giver's basis to calculate any gain and the fair market value to calculate any loss. If the fair market value of the gift is greater than the giver's basis, the giver's basis is used to calculate both gain and loss. Here's an example of how that works. James gave stocks with an original basis of $7,500 to his friend, Jeremy. As of the date of the gift, the stocks had a fair market value of $5,000. Two months later, Jeremy sells the stocks for $8,500. Since the fair market value of the stocks is less than James's original basis, Jeremy uses James's original basis to calculate the gain, which would be $1,000. If Jeremy had instead sold the stocks for only $4,500, the basis would be the fair market value of the stocks as of the date of the gift, yielding a loss of $500. If James's original basis had been $5,000 and the fair market value on the date of the gift was $7,500, James's original basis is used to calculate either gain or loss. If he sold the stocks for $8,500, his gain would have been $3,500, and if he sold the stocks for $4,500, he would recognize a $500 loss, same as before. And that's the oversimplified rundown on calculating the basis of a capital asset. Additional information and resources on this topic can be found in the video description. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more mini deep dives into additional tax and financial topics, please subscribe. Also, please share this video with anyone who would find it useful. If you have any additional questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments space below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.